<laughs> Yay, we're so excited to be on Facebook. This is so fun. Yeah. And the fact that we can have the technology of four different, well, actually three different states, really, mm-hmm. um, joining live is pretty fun. It is fun. It's very fun. So <laughs> welcome, you guys. Um, we're so glad that you jumped on. Welcome to you that are watching us live. And then also welcome to you that are watching the replay, which is probably majority of you because hello, we all have lives. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Reagan's joining us from sunny, beautiful, salty. Now, do you live in Huntington Beach? I'm one street away from Huntington. So yeah, I'm staring at it, but I'm saving about $200,000 on my house. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I get that. Westminster. I love it. Oh, she's a gangster. (laughs) uh, Can't take that out of that white skin of hers. (laughs) All right. Jamie's joining us from Billings, Montana. Yes. Hello, hello, Jamie. And then Gretchen is joining us as usual in Dakar. In Dakar. In Seattle, in the Seattle area. Okay. So are you right in Seattle, you're Tacoma, Puyallup. I'm Tacoma, Puyallup, yeah. So Seattle is about third, 25, 30 minutes north of me. Awesome. Awesome. So you get all the fun traffic. Yes. I literally, I'm like, this could quite possibly be LA traffic. No, no. I was going to, I was calm that. No, it's not. (laughs) Minus Seattle has more one way streets than I feel like anywhere. Like, yes, you know, it's like, no, I'm trying you're going the wrong way on the one way. So yeah. That's all bonding bonding experience. I love it. So, um, what we would love is tell us where you're joining from, um, drop a little, uh, comment in below and let us know where you're joining from. What state are you joining us from the closet? Are you hiding? Are you in your car? Whatever case may be. And then also, who's drinking coffee? So I've got my bulletproof coffee. Mm -hmm. Starbucks. Starbucks. Uh, I drink my coffee already. Um, But as I was getting ready upstairs, I'm like, I know why we call it coffee talk. Because if we pre-drink the coffee, then everything coming out of our mouth (laughs) is coffee, aroma, nasty, gross. So I made sure to brush my teeth, even though you can't smell me. (laughs) <laughs> Why is it that you uh, brush your teeth and put perfume on before you jump on a live video? I don't know. I just get worried about you guys, you know? I mean, it, could be, it could be that strong. Um, I'm going to smell you through the screen. That's right. Lindsay said she's laying in bed. Tessa's still in Whitefish, Montana. She's been awake for hours, so her coffee is gone. I'm with you, Tessa, but maybe you can talk and coffee still comes out like I was mentioning, right? <laughs> Yeah. Coffee talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's do a quick recap and welcome you guys. We're so excited that you, you jumped on and joined us. Um, so we ended last week on our coffee talk really um, Gretchen and Jamie gave us some awesome nuggets as far as I know Gretchen talked about um, really being able to say, you know, being aware this week. So hopefully you guys this last week, you're able to kind of be aware of when you're saying yes to what really feels like a good thing. Um, most of these things are not, like we said, blinking lights of like morning, morning, don't say yes to this, but saying yes to the good thing. And really in the end, saying no to something that's great mm. and that can be applied to so many different things. And then also I love, um, what Jamie left us with and that, that was really, you know, saying yes to things inevitably, if, if we're not prayerful about it and if we're not really being proactive about it, it could pull from your weakest link which scares me. That scares me because, you know, if you have children, if you're trying to run a business, a lot of times your weakest link is going to be your most important thing, which is your marriage. And that, when you said that, that it kind of scared me a little bit because isn't that so true? And I think Reagan, you were talking about that too, in between your mannequin challenge, (laughs) um, was, uh, you know, really the people that we love the most and are the, the biggest priorities in our life are going to end up hurting the most if we don't get this disease to please in check. Yeah. So we would love to hear from you guys. Were you aware of that this week? So let us know in the comments below, were you able to kind of take a look at, wow, I didn't even realize that that's how that pops up. Or maybe that person is always asking me to do something, or maybe that particular social setting, I kind of cave in, you know, it might be, once you start, you start to be aware of it. I think sometimes you start to see that habit of it's the same place or it's the same person. 
or we're sleep deprived, how easy is it to just say yes when you're tired? Mm-hmm. You know, so um, let us know in the comments how that was this last week with those action points that we left you with. So we're talking about the disease to please, how it affects our schedule and inevitably the choices we make throughout the entire day. Jamie, give us some information about um, really the root, the root of what drives those choices that we make. I'm always about those roots. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, about the I was roots. just telling you, <laughs> <and> I'm like, <laughs> let's not talk about everything else. Let's just get to the root of what you're really <laughs> wanting to say to me right now, even if we haven't seen each other ever before. <laughs> um, yeah, just I'm, 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 all, I'm all about those roots. Um, you know, I, it's, it's a fascinating thing to me anyway, but, but I just feel like we could, we could talk all day about us doing this and then just saying, we're going to stop and we're going to be aware of it. Uh, but I feel like that's kind of like just picking the rotten fruit off the tree, um, which it's, it's going to continue to happen unless we identify where it's really coming from. We talked a little bit about that last week, uh, about the, the driver behind the disease to please. And I talked about living loved, And, and the difference of understanding that there's a call to love in our life, but we can confuse that or mask our reasons for saying yes, as the call to love when really it's just to be loved, Mm. searching for love. And, and now when we say the word love, it could simply mean acceptance. It could simply mean affirmation or validation that you're okay. Um, Or it could be, Hey, you're needed. You're important because right. all these people are asking you to do things. And so and it feels really good. like, woohoo. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and we, and we can build our identity and value based off of that. Eventually that's, that's how these, these roots tend to grow as they start to, to grow out wide and they start to get into all these other areas. And so uh, really when we're talking about operating out of this place of, of living loved and checking our motives and deciding whether we're saying, yes to something because it's a part of our core values and what God's calling us to, or yes to something because we're, we're looking for love in the wrong places. That's really what we want to get to. Is that a song? Looking for, love looking for love. Is that a song? I could do that. I could probably do and it. That. And then I would I like you. Reagan to do interpretive dance. Um, so like Go Reagan for it. pop up with some flags. Um, I was just going to say Serena thought about it over the week and has been better about sending ba- setting boundaries. Um, so setting boundaries and talking about the root, how do we, how do we know what boundaries we're setting unless we know what place we're coming from? Right. Right. Or where we're going. Yeah. Yeah. I think part of the boundaries is just, um, do I even have a plan? You know, mm-hmm. what is the filter for this choice? You know, mm-hmm. what, what is like, you talk about the motivation, mm-hmm. setting the boundaries. Oh my gosh, Serena, that goes, I think about that all the time as far as, okay, does this fit into where we're going? But you can't say that unless you know where you're going, you know, yeah. in your marriage or in your parenting. Mm-hmm. And just, I mean, I think even if you just break it down to simply for me, it's just like, where do I want to be this week? Like, do I want to just, is this my week? Is this my week? Yeah, honestly, this hour, is this like my week where I just want to come in and just literally like rest. Like I'm just, I'm feeling maxed out. My family feels maxed out. It's summer. And for whatever reason, we're not doing homework and I'm not making lunches, but we're still maxed out. Like what's, what's happening. And so that's where I'm like, okay, let's back it up. And even what Jamie said, it's like, why do we say yes? And I feel like, you know, my yeses only got more, the more kids I had, which was crazy. Cause I feel like four kids should be an easy out for like, no, I can't make a dinner. And right. I noticed even for myself, is that my doorbell? <laughs> I got a new security system. Um, either that or like new angel got its wings. Um, I had this thing. I was like thinking about like, why do I say yes? And you know, one area that I like constantly, and I mean, I feel like all of us are in this, you know, like if somebody's in need and it's like, we bring them a meal, like they had a baby, they need a meal, they're right. sick, something's going on. Or you hear about like, you know, something's happening and it's like, everybody's like, okay, let's sign up. Let's bring them some. I just want to be honest. I absolutely hate, I barely want to bring my own family meals. Like I'm like, <laughs> I am like cooking at home for them. And then I, and then even though it's like, you know what, just send them a pizza. That feels like horrible. Cause it's a piece of organic. Is it gluten-free? Like it's going right. to look so ghetto compared to all the other people that like pulled together some amazing stuff. So now I'm saying, 
yeah, I'm going to make this for them. And this is a real life example here. So if I sent you a meal, the last one I sent <laughs> was a pizza. This is like a they, disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. And the last one I sent, she'd had a baby. They were like in the hospital. And so I sent them like a meal, my meal, the pizza. And the pizza showed up and they wouldn't take my credit card that I provide over the phone. So my friend actually ended up having to pay for it herself. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I didn't even want to send it in the first place because I absolutely hate that. Like I'm <laughs> I'm your person. If you're like, I'm just stressed out. You can drop my kid off or, you know what? You want me to pay for a babysitter? <laughs> Maybe I'll, Let you me be a my... blessing. I'm going to order pizza for you. And you're going to pay for it. It's yeah. really not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, at the end, like, I mean, it's those little things that I feel like all of a sudden I've said yes, because when I'm, what I want to be accepted in the group, when we're sitting there with all these women that are amazing and they're yeah. like, Oh, absolutely. You know what? I'm going to grow in some stuff in my garden or, you know, they just whip out a meal out of like, can of tuna and it's like some casserole and you're like how'd you do that I just you're like me too I'm gonna bring a meal like of course I'm gonna do something to help or you know and and even if we hit the financial sometimes it's like everybody's talking about doing this one thing and maybe all of a sudden we're like okay well we want to be involved we and it's like Jamie said in the end it's like we're not even thinking please we're just like I want to be accepted I want my kids to go to this you know event that maybe in reality we as a family are like you know what I don't have one kid. I've got four of you. So I'm paying four right. times for what one person's paying once or twice for. And we've right. already decided this is our one thing. But instead of having them even learn with like the disappointment of I'm um, saying like, okay, we're not going to say yes to everything. We're not going to make, we can't make everybody happy, including ourselves. Cause sometimes right. we want to do it, but it's like for the greater good of our own sanity, our pocketbook, our marriage, our parenting, right. we say no. So Reagan, do you think, I asked Gretchen this earlier before live, but do you think that the motivation out of, I'm going to make you a meal or I'm going to, I'm going to give to this, or I'm going to do that. Not always, but like in the examples that you use, because I'm not saying that always our motives are off. No, you know, we, we always gotta be in check. Um, do you think that that's partially, you don't want people to perceive you as being uncaring or stingy or, um, selfish with your time? Like you're worried about what other people's perception is. If you say no, absolutely. I thought about it. And you know, that story in the Bible that talks about like the guy that's praying and he's like, well, oh, this is how I do. And then the little woman that comes by just drops her little money and says some little prayer. I'm like, to be honest, like just for me, I know some people that's their heart. Like they love doing those things, but I think that comes to like finding what the heart is of you. And for me, I don't love that. So I'm only doing it because I want you to know, to be honest, I'm going to Facebook post the meal, my pizza box, <laughs> you know, and I want you to know, because then I'd be like, oh, good. Reagan's a good person. She jumped on the meal train. And we're all trying to help out so-and-so, you know, and really like, I want to help them out, but that's not an area that it's just like, it's kind of like, oh, I hate doing this. And now I'm feeling like, so it's honestly, it's almost like that tainted gift. They're not going to know it, but I already know. And one of the talking about just like the bitterness you kind of feel sometimes as you say yes to people where you're still like, Oh my gosh, I'll totally help out. You know what? I'll bring the snack. You know what? Let's do the plate at my house. Oh my gosh, no worries. And, and you're you just like, is that tone too? Yeah, I do. <laughs> so if you hear me talking really high, you'd be like, she doesn't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. I just don't have it. Oh. That was a little freaky too. And then I get home and all of a sudden my tone changes. And my kids are like, I told you we got to clean up. We got everybody coming over here. And I already signed up. And I, you guys wanted to have your friends. And I said, yes. And I don't know why I did. And why am I having to sleep over? And it's like, I probably would have enjoyed one of those, but it's like the constant pattern of almost like you feel like you don't have a choice because you made the choice to be constantly wanting acceptance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So yes. I, I'm like totally at the doctor's. I mean, I've already got the diagnosis and I'm still trying to take the medicine to get out of this disease, please, and disease to say yes. So, well, and I just, I think it affects so many different areas and, um, that's a really common area of just wanting to, you know, do the right thing and do the nice thing. And, and sometimes we don't even have time to check our motives. We just robotically move through the motions of this is what you do when you're a mom, boop, boop, boop. This is what we do when we're a wife, you know, isn't this what everybody does? Um, well, and, and Serena put on here, she says, uh, one of her comments is like, I realize I don't have to be the solution to every need every person I know has. Right. And Cause there's I so think, many. And I think, you know, the more 
you know, not even type A, but the more you're like, you do have a heart to help people. You do have a heart. Right. to serve. You do want to love people and be loved. I mean, let's be honest. I don't want to just love everybody and nobody loves me, but then I become the solution instead of maybe it's like, you know, I'm now the enabler. Like, yes, you need something done. Come ask me. So I've now enabled all my friends to be like, ask. And they aren't all like that. So if you're watching, I don't think that's about you guys. You know, I'm the lazy one. So, but I'm still sometimes, you know, it comes back to like, we're trying to solve it, you know? Well, and why? Yeah. Look at how many older women we see. And, and again, not all older women, but um, you know, maybe they're empty nesters that have just gotten into that habit of doing everything for everybody. Um, and really in the end, avoiding their own life, avoiding their own needs, avoiding really knowing who they are when there's an empty nest because they've just always jumped on everybody's needs. Gretchen, um, you've got a little bit of a different story in the whole living loved piece and really the um, disease to please and, and, and what it looks like in the corporate world. So I'm curious to hear kind of your thoughts on that. Well, I think, you know, obviously my experience comes specifically from the corporate world, but I think this day and age, um, you know, we live in a world where <clears throat> it's really hard to survive on one income. And my husband and I have always been in, in a position where both of us have been working and trying to take care of the kids. But my job in the corporate world finally got to a point where I started doing really well early on. And I became very tied up over time in always saying yes to that next position. And I was always going in and being the cleanup person, right? Like going in and swooping in like Wonder Woman to be the hero. And the first couple of times it felt good. And then I started to get asked more to go take on bigger operations and, you know, make more money to go clean up a bigger mess. And then it just became like this, well, I'm going to say yes, because that's what I've always done. Because if I say no then I'm going to be perceived as that I'm not a team player. <clears throat> and then as the money started to flow in, I really became consumed with not only my status and my title that, you know, I started getting value from the paycheck. Let's mm -hmm. be honest. I mean, from a financial standpoint, I was like, shoot, I'm the I'm one of the youngest women in a predominantly male driven industry. I don't need to prove myself to nobody. And, you know, I've got the paycheck to prove it. I got the title to prove it. I got the corner office to prove it. Right. And in 2014, the Lord literally got me to rock bottom. And it was at rock bottom that I figured out who the rock was. And I've mm. never looked back, legitimately never looked back. And in 2015, I was already at a point where I knew that the Holy spirit was calling me to something different, completely, utterly different. I didn't know what that looked like, right. but December of 2015, my job, my company came to me and said, Hey, we can't afford to pay you anymore. So luckily I had that breakthrough beforehand, right. but 12 years before that, it was literally, Oh, I got, you know, Hey girl, what was your bonus this quarter? Oh, I got, I got X, Y, Z. Hey girl, are you know, I saw that you're in the top 20% of the company. And at the end of the day, I used to let that stuff control me. I used to literally go to bed with anxiety and go, what if I lose that status? Like, what if I get knocked down to the bottom 25%? Then what? Mm -hmm. So I just kept continuing to say yes to the point that I was just mm. burnt out legitimately. Yeah. And it becomes, it becomes an addiction. And I think a lot of people think addiction is just about substance abuse, but addiction can take on so many different forms, which is exactly why the disease to please, if you really get down to the root of it, it's an addiction of something, right? Yeah. Whether it's your identity, whether it's your self-worth, whether yeah. it's addiction to yourself. <laughs> an addiction to yourself and this addiction to feel validated by something that only Christ himself can validate you with. It's good. Right? And I have learned that lesson, the extreme hard way, like really hard way to the point that we don't even have enough time to get, <laughs> we don't yeah. even have enough time to talk about oh, it right now. Oh, we're going to get there. <laughs> yeah. That will be, a, but today be for not special private. Group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. So it just, for me, it, it was an addiction and that's, um, that's a really hard thing to admit. It's a hard thing to admit, but there's freedom that comes with that and going, right. you know what? Like 
I'm going to say no. And I still have to say no to stuff. And it it's becomes a lifestyle. That, it's crazy the comfort zone we build around ourselves in that disease to please, in that constantly saying yes, it becomes this comfortable blanket that, and we're going to talk about this at the end is just like, when I take that off, what do I do with that uncomfortable feeling? Because I've been saying yes for so long. Like, I feel naked. I feel a little different. I feel a little weird here, a little exposed because, well, we'll talk about what are some of the things that can happen when that happens. But I, I love Lisa Turkhurst. Um, she says, God's love isn't based on me. It's simply placed on me. Yep. And it's the place from which I should live. Mm-hmm. Love. Yep. So it has nothing to do with what we do has nothing to do with what we do or who we are, or what we do for a living or how many meals we make for pregnant women or <laughs> how many, um, you know, promotions we get. It has nothing to do with any of that. In fact, those motives really end up leading to pride, which mm-hmm. we know what happens when that sneaks in. Mm-hmm. Um, Bad stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I love that. You know, we, um, when we were talking about speaking about, you know, the disease to please in our schedules and we sent out an email yesterday. So if you are not on our email list, um, comment below, uh, give us a number one, if you're not on our email list, because we had, um, an email that got sent out yesterday, just really asking for, Hey, um, you know, I was a little bit transparent with what I've struggled with in the past and we really wanted to get your guys's feedback. So we don't want you guys to miss out on that. So definitely drop a one if you're not currently getting those emails. Um, but one of our girls, um, emailed us and she said number five. So what we sent out was, uh, something that Jamie had written up, um, as far as the five consequences of the disease to please. And number five I'll read it to you guys. Um, You're easy for others to take advantage of because you're so nice and you never say no. You're often the person that everyone will rely upon, even if you're already overextended. So you're kind of the go-to girl. You're the yes girl. And so one of our, one of our girls emailed us back and said, you know, this is something that I, I have really experienced. What would you guys say to her? That's easy one for me Um, because I learned that the hard way as well. I'm, I am a girl that goes straight to scripture and it, it, it specifically says in scripture, let your yeses be yes and your noes be no. And I believe that God calls us to let our yeses be yes and our noes be no, not only to have that integrity, but to protect ourselves, to allow ourselves to rest on whatever day, you know, your Sabbath is, or just to be able to recharge. And I think that the enemy is really good at using chaos and confusion and feeling like we have to say yes all the time. But I always come back to and go, ain't nowhere in the Bible does it say you need to be a doormat. There is no doormat syndrome that comes with being a Christ follower. And I think we get very caught up in doing what's right, forgetting what actually living right looks like. So let your yes be yes and your no be no. And you can say that no with confidence. And I repeat that scripture a lot. You know, let my yeses be yes, my noes be no. <clears throat> because I know that I'm protecting what God has entrusted me with. And that's my body, my mind, my soul, my heart. And it's a practice. It's not something that happens overnight. So you have to give yourself a little bit of grace. Right. Well, and um, to give you a background, uh, we're keeping all of these anonymous, but I do know she's in her 20s and what a beautiful opportunity to learn this now. Yes. Oh my um, gosh. Yes. Before she gets married, before she has kids, Reagan, what would you say to her? Oh man. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> to be honest, I got myself off track because I was reading a comment about some, one of our SVS girls that's babysitting a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven year old this week. And I was like, <laughs> I was just, I was silently praying for her. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm like, gosh, let's Lord. just go ahead and pray. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but I, I do think, I, I think exactly what Gretchen said that actually struck with me. <laughs> yeah. Your yes be yes. Like if we're, if everything's a yes, then no means nothing. Do you know what I mean? Mm, like my, my mm-hmm. kids are, my kids are the ones that are like bringing me down. And I think when you're single, it's kind of like you kind of, I mean, I know my, my single sister, I got to give her a shout out every week, you know, some great guy. She's actually watching him kill me after this, but, um, you know, she, she has 
master the no <laughs> and because she's like, you know what? This is my one time. Like, I'm not going to become now just because I'm single. Like, all right, I'm going to watch everybody's kids. I'm going to do everything. You know what? Yeah. Okay. When we go to family vacation, I'll share the bed with everybody because I'm the one that doesn't have a spouse. It's like, no, I'm going to pay the same amount as you. I want my own room, my own bed. And I think it is like you said, you know, we're not meant to be a doormat. We're meant to, you know, be a bridge, be loving in people. Mm. And I, I think oh, for so her, funny. it's like, if you're, if you're all of a sudden feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm, you know, the Bible says first love yourself and then love others as you love yourself. And I feel like my, I know for me personally, all my yeses get to a point where it's like, I, that whole self-care, like I get to totally relate to that woman is like watching like eight kids. And at the same time, I'm still working. And then you're like, well, maybe I do this to help somebody out or I need money. It's like, no, like at a certain point, oh. kind of one just, let it go. Right. 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 Well, good. wisdom from that sister. I don't know if you saw her comment prior to you revealing <laughs> she's single. Um, she, she and did say, <laughs> stop. <Rachel. laughs> I'm just going to just go ahead and cover <laughs> that. Sister. Live anyway. <laughs> oh, actually, how about, how about we do this? Share this video. In yeah. case there's a guy on your newsfeed, <laughs> oh, you know, looking for, so exactly. share the video and uh, we'll do a little matchmaking. Okay. Sorry. Oh, yes, we didn't yes, matchmakers. Even, that's right. She had no idea what she was into in this community. Um, <laughs> but what she did say is we have to always be on guard and fight against the, the desire to perform. And, mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I, that's such a big deal for me um, that somehow I equate um, opportunity. I equate, um, provision. I equate my identity, my value, all of that based on my performance. And what's amazing about the quote that you, uh, shared with us with Lisa Turkhurst is that the, the love's placed on you. And it was before I ever walked, talked, thought, <laughs> you know, right. it was that love was the same then as it is now. And it has nothing to do with what I do, what I say and how I perform. God's love is not based on it in a measure of how good I am or how bad I am. Thank God that he didn't right. say that like that. But, but we get that addiction though, to the affirmation from people. Yeah. And that's where it becomes addicting is we start to pull that like, Ooh, that makes me feel so much better about my life. Right. It helps me deal with my negative when I'm getting somebody else's positive. And, and I think somebody else then said, there's, there's a control addiction that I think when we're feeling chaos and we're feeling like, you know, then by saying yes to everything, we have our hand in everything, then we can control it. And we get addicted to that, you know? Oh and so, so addicted to performance based, addicted to, um, to the control issue, addicted to affirmation. Um, all of that's idols. All of yep. that is looking for love in the wrong places. All of that is worshiping something other than God who loved you before any of this ever, any of this ever started happening. Um, so that is so good. One thing that I want, I wrote down when Gretchen was talking, because I think this is something, um, a, just a little different angle of this saying yes, but I think that it's important because really the, the, the root is fear of, of whatever kind, right? Fear of rejection or fear of disappointment, fear of failing. Um, what about the fear of missing it? Because I think sometimes we say yes to something because we're afraid we're going to miss the opportunity. It's never going to come again. If I say this, I'm missing the opportunity for blessing. Mm. If I say yes, I'm missing the opportunity for provis provision. If I say yes, I'm, I'm going to lose favor. If I, or if I don't say yes, right, I guess is, right. I should be saying that if I don't say yes to these things, I'm missing my opportunity, um, that it's going to pass me by. Oh gosh, um, drop a two if this resonates with you guys. Absolutely. Put a two down in the comments below because keep going. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so good. I, I think I think so many of us, I mean, kind of with the control and performance, right. I think that that kind of ties into it, that we right. try and take control of our destiny, that somehow we can go, um, you know, if I line everything up correctly and right. if I behave in these ways, and if I say yes, like Gretchen did to the, every opportunity given to me, then it right. will give me this outcome, this equation yeah. of control performance, A plus B equals what I want or what I think is right. best or what I feel like God wants for me. Um, and so anyway, I, when she was saying that, I was thinking of how many times I've said yes or been tempted to say yes to something for fear of missing it or that I, I'm like, gosh, right. am I, I mean, is God, if I don't say that yes now, am I? am I going to be set up well for the future, the next opportunity? 
Right, right. You know what, that's, you know, as you're talking about that, a fear of, it's actually a marketing thing, fear of loss. That's yeah. actually used on us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it's, it's, something, <laughs> it's something that's used on us, but it's also something that we've been taught if we've been in network marketing, you know, yep. that fear of loss, um, fear of being left out, you know, make that choice to go to that event, make that choice to jump on this or buy that because there's only 10 left. <laughs> there's only, you know, so that um, missing out. Mm-hmm. Missing out is, is huge. And it's funny when you mentioned the control thing, Andy just walked by so I can, you know, I can be totally transparent <laughs> and ask for forgiveness at the same time live. <laughs> Love um, it. But, you know, when you feel like things in your life are out of control, you know, things are beyond what you can handle that you, you can't do anything about some big situations that happen in your life. It's so in a twisted, messed up way in our human nature, easy to try to micromanage and control all these little things because somehow, somehow we're like grasping on control for something. We clearly have no control of that. So I'm going to control this. I'm going to go work out and, and just, you know, put everything into that. I can control that or I can control my eating. Um, or I can, you know, try to control every tiny little thing because everything else feels so out of control. Um, how does that fall into the disease to please Jamie? You're so good at wrapping all this stuff up. Shit, it's a gift. <laughs> Got it. Oh man. We'll just throw all these balls at her and let her like <laughs> juggle them and connect. Them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, I think the desire to control somehow we think that maybe we can influence um, if, if we're saying yes to someone, we can influence then their response, their, um, position toward us or as terrible as this sounds. Um, I think that this can happen with the whole making meals thing that she owes me. Um, yeah, yeah. I've had that fear of like, oh man, I owe her. And actually Lindy said it last week with the teachers, like they've done so much for my kids. I owe Um, But I think the controlling thing is like staying up on, um, you know, staying one up on things. And so you are um, pleasing someone so that they will please you. So twisted. Yuck. (laughs) But we do it. And I, you know, like, oh, that's just terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I remember doing that more when my kids were little, actually having that thought of I owe because she did. And so I want to please her. And, and then the idea of, controlling and maintaining everyone's happiness was going to somehow help me with my own, you know? That's crazy. Um, another Lisa Turkers kind of going back to the schedule. This was so good. And I'll, I'll try to read it slowly because I had to read it a few times. We run at a breakneck pace to try and achieve what God simply wants us to slow down enough to receive. Hmm. So we run at a breakneck pace to try and achieve what God simply wants us to slow down enough to receive. So just taking that breath and being able to know that being still and having less on the schedule, knowing that that is his plan for us, not Mm -hmm. to run it at an insatiable rate to try to grasp what he's already saying. I've got that right here. Mm -hmm. Just slow down. You know, I'll place it upon you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we're going to head into our time is up, but we're going to head into the disease to please next week and really how it affects our relationships, mm. in-laws, spouses, <laughs> children, coworkers. It's going to get real next week. It is. <laughs> Let's make sure our mother-in-laws aren't, aren't logged on to Facebook. <laughs> no, or our spouses. Yeah. yeah. Um, but real quick, before we log off, um, do we have any comments or, or anything of our viewers that we want to talk about or address for them? Then do you guys have any parting comments for everybody? 
Here's, here's a good parting comment from the uh, Kelly family. That's Reagan's maiden name. Actually, there's two. The Kelly women are just all about wisdom this morning. Thanks, <laughs> Kelly women. Um, so Mama Kelly says the main thing we should be afraid of missing out on is in heaven. And mm. sister says in our frenzy to rush to the end or the outcome, uh, we may miss out on what God wants to teach us during the journey. Oh, so in the middle, (laughs) speaking of Charlotte Gamble, if you've not heard of Charlotte Gamble, she has a book out, I believe it's called in the middle or mess in the middle or something in the middle, miracle Miracle in the middle, middle. Mm -hmm. mess in the middle, miracle in the middle. (laughs) That was close. (laughs) They're kind of the same. (laughs) Um, Check that book out, check out Charlotte Gamble, because she talks about that exact thing of just, you know, the beginning, we've kind of had the beginning down. We kind of have the end down that celebration, but it's in the middle that stuff gets real so. and she goes the middle sister you are the Whoa. miracle in the middle <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's coming back at you <laughs> i'm I sure i'll be getting a phone call as soon as this goes and it's live oh, Gretchen, any, pa- any parting comments um <clears throat> you know i would just say that this week my challenge to everybody on that's watching this whether it's live or even the replay viewers is just really being mindful of, especially, uh, you know, I agree with Jamie, that fear of missing out because fear is not of God. And I think that the FOMO can be applied to any area of your life. Fear of missing out on a play day with your kids, fear of missing out on serving on a ministry team at the church because you're not in the in crowd, fear Mm -hmm. of not being accepted into that mom group. If you miss a couple of mop sessions, it's all of that. Anything fear related is not of God. And the moment you can decipher and go, that's fear, then you know, it's not of God. And you know what you can kind of start to make a transition towards so that you don't have to feel like that. So I thought that was a really good point, Jamie, that the fear of missing out is far greater, I think, than we recognize. So just being cognizant of that this week. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good stuff. Anybody else? All right. Well, let's uh, be prepared for next week. Uh, again, drop us some comments on things that you'd like us to address. And, um, you know, we just love, we love the dialogue. That's, that's our, our biggest thing. So, and check, make sure you get signed up for that. Um, again, drop a comment if you're not on the email list so we can get that to you. It goes out every Sunday and um, we will um, we'll make sure we address your, your emails because we get back to each of your emails. We'll make sure we address those on our live coffee talks and we'll address them anonymously. So you could actually type us something about an in-law and we'll address it for you without you getting in trouble. Or an in-claw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, um, have an awesome week. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next Monday. Bye. Bye.